Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our geometry skill. Today is our day number five, lesson number five. Today we'll learn how to figure out a volume of a circular cylinder. Volume of a circular cylinder. And if you if you, if you if you're sitting there and telling me that you already know it because you memorize the formula, that is the whole point. I don't want you to memorize the formula. I want you to understand the concept. So before we talk about a volume of a circular cylinder, let's first talk about, or for that matter, volume of anything. Let's talk about what does the word volume mean? What does it mean when you talk about a volume of something? Volume of something simply means how much stuff can you put inside it? How much space does it have? How much stuff can you fill inside it? And how much stuff you can put in a cylinder, how much stuff you can put in a cylinder depends on two things. What are the two things it depends on? It depends on how wide open it is and how deep it is obviously let's draw a circular cylinder first so we can we can we can understand what's going on here so how much stuff I can put in the cylinder depends on how wide open it is on the top and how deep it is. This is known as the depth or the height. We can talk about the depth of the cylinder or the height of the cylinder, same thing. And how, how wide open it is, and the, so it depends on how wide open it is. Obviously, the bigger the opening, the more stuff you will be able to fit inside it. And uh, the deeper it is, the more stuff you uh, fit inside it, obviously. How wide open it is, how wide open it is on the top, how wide open it is, has to do with, has to do with its diameter. Obviously the diameter, how wide open it is, has to do with the diameter. The bigger the diameter, the more wide open it is, and therefore, and therefore, the area of the circular opening. So that's the first part. How deep it is has to do with its depth. How deep it is. It's simple how deep it is has to do with its height or depth as we said already. So how do we find out so how do we find out the circ the area the area of the circular opening? Well area of the circle How do you find out area of the circular opening? That has to do with the area of the circle on the top here, right here. The area of the circular opening on the top is the area of the circle right here, which is simply pi r squared. And then here is your height. And that's it. The r squared gives you the two dimensions that you need. There's something squared times the height that's going to give you your third dimensions. 
So the volume of a circular cylinder is simply the, the area of the circular opening area of the circular opening times the height of the cylinder the height of the cylinder area of the circular opening is simply pi r squared times the height. There you go, that's your volume. There's nothing there to memorize. There's nothing there to remember. There's nothing there to memorize. As long as you understand, as long as you know how to figure out the area of the circle, we're just adding one more dimension, which is the height of the cylinder. And that's what it is. The area of the circular opening on the top times how deep it is. The, the, the deeper it is, the, the more stuff is going to be able to uh, the more stuff you're going to be able to put inside it. For example, let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So one more time, the volume of a cylinder tells you how much stuff you can put in a cylinder and that depends on two things, how wide open it is on the top and how deep it is. How wide open it is has to do with the area of the circular opening which is pi r squared, the area of the circular opening. How deep it is has to do with the depth, the height. You just multiply the two concepts, that's it. Let's do a couple of examples. Let's do a couple of examples. So I have one cylinder here which has a radius of 5 feet and the height of 4 feet. And then I have another cylinder here which has a radius of 10 feet and the height of 1 foot. Let's figure out their volume. Let's figure out which one has a, has a bigger volume. Volume is pi r squared times h. Pi r squared, which is 5 feet squared, times height, which is 4 feet. So 5 times 4 is 20. 20 pi. And then feet squared times feet, feet squared times feet. That's going to give you your 20 pi cubic feet, feet cubed. Now let's figure out this guy. Volume equals pi r squared times h. Pi r squared, r is your 10 feet squared times your height which is 1 foot. So here you have 10 feet. Oh, this is all wrong. This is all wrong. I forgot to square the 5, didn't I? 5 squared, 5 squared is 25, times 4 is 100. I knew something was fishy, because the whole thing was not uh, turning out as I had planned. So here is your 10 squared, which is 100. 100 times pi, that gives you the 100 pi. And then feet squared times feet, this gives you the cubic feet. It turns out, it turns out that both of these both of this cylinder, let's call it cylinder A and cylinder B, both of these cylinders have the same volume. They just have different shapes. Should we draw them? They have different shapes. This one has the height of, this one has a radius of 10 feet. Let me draw, the, I need the room so I'm going to erase this part here so that we can draw them properly. This one has a radius of 10 feet. It's a very wide open cylinder. But the height of only one foot. It's a very strange looking cylinder. This is 10 feet, so from here to here, it's 20 feet wide open, with the height of only one foot.
Let me, let me do a better job. This looks pretty ugly. There. You get the idea. This is 20 feet. Here, the radius is only 5 feet. But the height is four feet. So here to here is only ten feet. So even though it's only ten feet as opposed to twenty feet, this is twice uh, a, a, as uh, uh, long in terms of diameter. But they have the same volume because this is deeper. This is four times as deep. It has four feet of depth as opposed to only one foot of depth. But they both have the same volume. One hundred cubic feet 100 cubic feet even though technically speaking it should be read as 100 feet cubed but the convention dictates the tradition dictates that we read this as 100 cubic feet cubic feet means the same thing as feet cubed the feet has to be cubed because it's a volume it's a three-dimensional concept. What do we have for tomorrow? Day number six. I do not have the day number six in front of me. I don't have it in front of me. But I'll see you tomorrow. We'll learn some more concepts of geometry. As I explained to you already before, when I started this video on geometry, what I'm trying to do here in the, in the first few days, perhaps if I will take the first ten days, to cover the basic fundamental concepts of geometry in a great deal of details. And once I've covered the basic concepts of geometry, then we're going to start solving the problem, actual problem that you are likely to encounter on the SAT, the GRE, and the GMAT. And it will help you practice to improve your geometry skill uh, to, help you, uh, to help you in your preparation for these exams. All right. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, either face-to-face -face tutoring or over the internet via Skype for GRE, GMAT, SAT, or TOEFL, or for statistics, algebra, uh, calculus, geometry, what have you. You can go to any of these website addresses that you see there and send me an email. Or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Alright? Thanks.